My name is Eugenia Diaz, and three years ago I moved to a tiny village in the mountains of Portugal. With the dream of living a simpler life, more in harmony with nature, I decided how the future I wanted to live looked like. Growing my own food, harvesting my own flowers, and picking fresh fruit from my own trees was all a desire. So I made a decision with such a firm intention that a level of energy was created to push boundaries and make the body follow the mind. With a lot of hard work during the past years, we built all of this from scratch with perseverance, passion and love. And I went from thinking to doing to being, to learning with my head, to applying it with my hands to knowing it by heart. But the dream of regenerating our land didn't stop in this small portion of land. Many more trees, flowers and varieties of vegetables and fruits needed to be grown to fulfill that dream. And at the beginning of this year, we not only started the build of our forever home, but the dream of turning an empty land into a huge forest. But sometimes, besides what we are used to in our current digital world, big dreams don't turn into reality in a matter of seconds, hours or days, especially when you are doing it all with just four hands. This meant that I had to accept that the dream of the big forest wasn't going to happen overnight because it is a life project, our life project. And although it will take a lot of strength, determination, passion and resilience, I need to start believing again in order to become and create what I was envisioning. And these months have been about falling and failing and standing back up again to learn and accept that every failure carries with it a seed of opportunity. A new herb I'm really excited to grow this year is the Perilla or Shiso plant, an Asian herb from the mint family that I'm hoping to grow as a perennial in our garden to hopefully enjoy in my cooking all year long. But time will tell, it will all depend in our winter's climate. This spring I finally was able to find tobacco seeds, a plant I'm really excited to grow and that I'm hoping to use not only as an ornamental in the garden, but also as a pest control for small insects. This year I haven't been able to sow many flowers in the garden, and the ones that I sow will take some time to flower. So I was really excited when the first tobacco flowers appear, especially this variety, which gives a beautiful scent to the garden early in the mornings and late in the evenings with its jasmines like accent that reminds me of my summer childhood in Andalusia. The tobacco plant has a sticky glands covering all its surfaces that regularly snare and kill small insects such as eggnants, aphids and small flies and at the same time these beautiful flowers attract butterflies, hummingbirds and moths.
this point, due to the wind and harsh weather, the trees were suffering in the bases they came in a few weeks ago, constantly failing and breaking some of their delicate branches. But luckily, by this day we received everything we needed to start the work. A couple of pick bags of organic compost, which meant that finally the first trees of the more than 1000 we plan on planting were ready to be transplanted in the soil. I started working in this part of our land back in January, having to go through many challenges. Flooded soil, lack of local resources like compost or hay, and at times even my own self-doubts. Expectations were slowly fading and the only thing I could hold onto was hope. Hope of taking each free day I had available to work here and taking a step forward towards the goal of transforming this place into a thriving green heaven, full of vegetables, trees and flowers, giving hope to all the people who wish to one day pursue the same dream of taking care of the land. And I'm telling you all of this because the journey that brought us here today started back in 2014 when we opened our small business with a few handmade items I made. And this month I'm celebrating one year since the launch of my farm to table garden guide, where I explain all we did in our garden, our polyculture approach and how to design it so it becomes a beautiful and productive part of your home where you would like to enjoy spending time at. I also explain the basic formula of how to create quality soil and everything you need to start growing your own food. Doesn't matter where you are or how much space you have. You can start as a small as a one by one food planter and expand what we have today or even more, like I'm doing in my new garden. And all of this has been possible thanks 
to Squarespace, which allowed us to launch our first website and online store back in 2014 and has allowed me to launch my second one as well. Squarespace is an amazing platform for building your brand and growing your business online. They help you to stand out with a beautiful website, which I easily created in less than a week. With their fluid engine, you can easily customize your website with the new drag and drop technology from your desktop or mobile. Their service offers many different features, such as blogging tools, mailing lists, member areas, or the ability to link any social media platform to your web page so you can share your gifts with the rest of the world. If you are interested in effortlessly creating your own blog or website, go to squarespace.com slash Eugenia Diaz for a free trial and a 10% off your first order of a website or domain. I will leave all the links in the description box. I look forward to seeing you creating beautiful things. In the last couple of years, we have planted several trees in the cabin's garden. 
we did the process of digging and transplanting all by hand and with the resources we had back then. Some survived and some didn't, but we learned what we failed and what worked. So this time we wanted to do all we could with better resources to increase the survival rate. We dug holes of around one cubic meter. Because the soil we have is really hard and compacted, the roots of small trees are not able to break in the soil, so they don't grow and stay small over the years, like the many olive trees that were planted a hundred years ago in the property, but are still very tiny. We got two types of organic compost, one from horse manure and another one made out of wood chips. We first dug the holes and then started adding the two composts, mixed it all together with the current soil and watered the holes abundantly, before and after transplanting each tree. We mix around 50% of the current soil with the 50% of the compost mix, made sure to loosen the clay soil up as much as we could and then mix it well with the compost. Since we knew that summer was going to be really dry and hot, we made a bed around the tree that holds water around it, so when it rains or when we water them, the water will stay in each tree. My plans with this garden was to have it all finished and looking lush by summer, but life doesn't always happen how we envision it. Things didn't go as planned, and that's okay. At times I thought about quitting. I was tired and the small progress I was making didn't seem to be making a huge difference. But when I look back at what we accomplished, I can see that every step of the process counted and thanks to every little step forward we took, we can now enjoy the fruits of the love and hard work. I want to also thank all of my patrons not only because with your help this place is turning into something better than what it was before, but also because when I was tired and thought about quitting, I felt that I was quitting in all of you. And the thought about failing so many of you gave me the strength that at times I didn't even know I had. Nothing changes in our life until we change. And so I hope you also find your inner strength to never lose hope and pursue your dreams, to accept and enjoy as much as you can the journey. Because one day you too will look back and realize that everything was achievable when you trusted in your inner power.